Hi there. Today we're going to talk about this book, Western Boxing and World Wrestling, Story and Practice, and it's by John F. Gilby. And it was actually suggested uh, for review by one of our subscribers. And since I do have it in my uh, library, I, I have eventually gotten around to uh, bringing it out. Uh, and I would just add that if you do have any suggestions for books you'd like to hear or review, just email me. This book, um, it's rather strange in a way because the previous books by John Gilby have uh, fictionalized the martial arts um, with, with um, systems given um, their own um, uh, fictionalized identities and um, with characters, instructors or masters who are th thinly veiled um, versions of uh, a group mainly of um, martial arts guys who used to congregate at Don Draga's house in Ichigaya in Tokyo. Um, whereas uh, John Gilby, which is the nom de plume of uh, Robert W. Smith, uh, Robert W. Smith himself has written numerous books of uh, serious uh, histories and uh, overviews of uh, actual martial arts, mainly of the Chinese systems. Uh, and this book, I think, w would fit more in the Robert W. Smith because it, it is uh, a history and it's not uh, a fictionalised uh, book at all. However, he, he decides to put it under the, the Gilby um, uh, name. One of the things he does is to give a history of pugilism. And pugilism was all in fighting. It, it was uh, striking was allowed and also um, grappling. So really it was the mixed martial arts uh, of its day. Uh, also, originally, a lot of what we would now call foul moves and dirty fighting uh, took place, gouging, for example, biting. Uh, by uh, the clinching, what the clinching uh, stimulated was the development of the hook, because pure striking arts uh, were emphasizing straight punching and, and at long range. So, as soon as you're in the clinch, the hook, the circular strike, um, became uh, an advantage. And because of the rotational effect to the brain, you were getting knockouts. Then, in um, 1838, the London Prize Rules were introduced, and these uh, for, uh, forbid uh, some of the dirty fighting moves. Then, later on, in 1866, the Marcus of Queensbury brought out his rules and um, they uh, in introduced mandatory gloves and uh, no grappling. Uh, but under the old uh, London Prize rules, the longest fight they had was uh, 6 hours 15 minutes. So you can imagine what a rough sport it was then. The book goes on to cover uh, a lot of the history of boxing in the United States, particularly the Golden Gloves amateur uh, fighting in uh, the 1930s, in which um, the, the author was involved. Uh, he put on fights and he also coached. Uh, so he knew a lot of the guys. And they, these will be guys that... Um, are probably forgotten to current generations, but uh, some some of them had epic skills. Uh, he talks about um, quite a few characters um, that he he met and and watched and mentored. It's probably difficult for um, modern readers to realize just how rough things were back then uh, and I know just from um, the Liverpool area I, I've got friends whose fathers were, were boxers uh, at the time and um, uh, I, w one of them brought in his, his, his dad's cuttings from the newspapers and the amount of fights he had was phenomenal 
you know, several times a week, sometimes he'd be fighting. And there was uh, one, one guy, and he used to go to the Cross Keys pub, which was opposite the Liverpool Stadium, where the, the fights were held, and he'd be having a, a few pints of bitter, and they'd send someone over from the stadium, you know, we need a middleweight, uh, someone hasn't turned up, and he'd go over and he'd fight six rounds. It was quite common. Also, um, you had guys who were primarily wrestlers. Uh, Bill Robinson, he was a wrestler, very noted wrestler, and uh, but he did fight uh, 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 um, in the stadium and, and other boxing venues. He, he, um, you know, if if there was um, a chance for a fight, it didn't matter which, which type of ring it was. So, after pugilism was separated into boxing and wrestling, um, the history of wrestling is also covered in the book uh, from, from the earliest days right through. And, of course, the giants like Hackenschmidt are mentioned and um, some of the epic fights uh, he, he had at the Royal Albert Hall, for example. Wrestling was um, a very, very popular spectator uh, sport. And um, unfortunately, though, when you had evenly matched uh, fighters, the bouts could go on uh, for hours. They, the guys would be dog-locked, um, seeking an advantage on the mat. And people would go out and have their dinner and come back and they'd still be on the mat. So this diminished its uh, popularity as a spectator sport and straight wrestling really almost disappeared for quite a while and professional wrestling took its place uh, as a mass entertainment uh, activity. Uh, obviously it's, um, it's not a real sport. Prime amongst British wrestlers uh, mentioned in the book is Bert Azarati. And even though he was only five foot six, he weighed 280 pounds, an absolute dynamo. He was on. He was only ever beaten once, and he um, he was known as the governor long before Lenny McLean uh, had that title. Bert Azarati was the governor, and Terry and I were working on uh, a, an article about him, and um, I've still got the research materials here. Terry passed them on to me. Uh, obviously, fighting arts uh, finished before we could do it. Uh, but he really was a character, and uh, I'll, I'll probably put something up about him at some stage. But just one little anecdote, a, a friend of mine uh, from the London area who was uh, uh, quite a senior karate guy, he, he met a girl um, in a club, got on well with her, and she um, invited him in for a coffee and uh, to meet her parents, and it was Bert Azarati. And... Uh, my, my my mate Brian knew who he was, so it was something of a passion killer. I, I know there are people who are intensely interested in the history of particularly boxing. Friend, I know friends who devour boxing news and, and, and can quote the statistics and they're really experts on it. They'll find this book re really interesting. I found it interesting from the point of view of history where... Um, techniques came from how styles developed uh, how fighting evolved how the rules changed and so on it's always good to have that um, that knowledge of where everything came from and uh, this is not your typical John Gilby book but I nevertheless found it uh, well worth reading <laughs> 